Good evening and welcome to E-Bible Fellowship's Bible Study in the Book of Genesis. Tonight is study number 26 of Genesis chapter 19. And we're going to begin reading in verse 17. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, O, oh, not so, my Lord. Behold now, thy servant has found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. O, oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then Jehovah reigned upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from Jehovah out of heaven. And I'll stop reading there. Okay, so we have come to the point where Lot is now outside the city. He has, uh, he has been brought out of uh, the city of Sodom by these messengers who are, again, um, God making the appearance as two men. And once he's out of the city, and, and again, the word abroad in verse 17 assures us he is outside the city. It came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad, or without, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. That and, and then Lot says in the next verse, Oh, not so, my Lord. Oh, not so. Now, we have um, an interesting problem or, or an interesting uh, apparent contradiction. And, and I don't know if I fully understand this. I, I think I'm uh, slowly starting to understand. But... We can know this. Historically, historically, when Lot came out of the city and the, the commandment of God through, again, these two men, who, who was God himself in the form of two men, the commandment of God was uh, escape to the mountain. Go to the mountain. And, and we've looked at that before, and we see how that agrees with... Matthew 24 um, and, and other of the gospel accounts. But I'll just read in Matthew 24. It says, once you see the abomination of desolation in the holy place, in verse 16, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. And, and we've understood that um, a parabolic statement as Judea is a type of the church, the mountains are a figure of God Himself. As it also says in Psalm 120, 125, in verse 1, They that trust in Jehovah shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so Jehovah is round about his people from henceforth even forever. And, and the picture that, that God has developed in Matthew 24 is come out of the church, go to God. And the way to go to God is to the Bible. And, and that's the problem. That's the problem when we're reading this historical parable that everything seems to fit with the whole idea of the end of the church age, the necessity to flee before it's destroyed, 
the command of God to go to the mountain, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And the word consumed is a word that means destroyed. If you don't escape to the mountain. But then Lot says, not so my Lord. Oh, not so my Lord. And Lot then begins, uh, first of all, he acknowledges um, God's goodness toward him in verse 19. Behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And so he's acknowledging grace, mercy, and that God has saved his life. But then he says, And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. So God is telling him, Escape to the mountain. And Lot is disputing with God. He's, he's arguing with God in a way, um, saying, uh, Not so, not so. Not so, Lord. And, and Lot has another idea. In verse 20, Behold, now this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. thither. Is it not a little one, and my soul shall live? And that little one, that little city, is Zoar. Zoar is a city... <clears throat> excuse me, is a city of the plain. There were five cities of the plain of Jordan. Uh, there, there was um, Adma, Zeboam, uh, and Sodom and Gomorrah, and Zoar. Zoar, which is uh, also known as Bela, uh, which we saw back, I think, in Genesis chapter 14. And, or, or Bela became known as Zoar, I think is probably the way it went. But there were five cities. God marked all the cities of the plain for destruction. All five were to be destroyed. And uh, it, 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 it really points to the, the destruction of God for the whole world. The whole world is to be destroyed. And within the world, you have an apostate church that, again, Sodom is uh, picturing. And, and that's where Lot dwelt in the apostate church uh, for a time. But then God came, being merciful to him, commanded him to come out because the church would be destroyed along with the world. Now, of course, we've learned it's all spiritual judgment, spiritual destruction. But um, th that's the situation. And, and yet Lot is really interceding on behalf of this little city, Zoar. And we'll, we'll try to take a look at that um, a little later, what that could point to. And, and in fact, God um, hearkens to Lot. He hearkens to him, is, is what it says after Lot pleads that, um, he, that he be able to go to this little city that's near. Then... then um, it, it, it says in verse 21, And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste the escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. So God um, curiously changes plans. God changed his own plan. God is the one who said, escape to the mountain. Now, now um, normally, God does not make adjustments like this. It's up to his people to make the adjustment. It, it's up to them to, to bend, uh, to um, humble themselves, and, and, and to come under uh, in submission to the will of God. But you see why this is kind of difficult. This is difficult. God says escape to the mountain. We have other, other commandments that, 
uh, or, or other scriptures that we can see what that means. And yet, the Lord seems to uh, pull back on that commandment. To And we know that later, uh, Lot actually and his two daughters will go to the mountain. And, and so it's very curious, very interesting. What is this... This um, uh, uh, th this departure to uh, this little city Zoar all about, and why is God so accommodating to Lot in allowing uh, his pleas to be accepted? You know, God could have said uh, when when uh, when uh, Lot said, "Not so, my lord," and and then. Um, made his plea to go to the nearer city Zoar, God could have said something like we read in Acts chapter 10. In Acts 10, where uh, the Lord is making a major change in uh, his doctrinal program from dealing exclusively with the Jews, with the nation of Israel, to now sending forth a worldwide gospel that will include the Gentiles. And, and so, in order to highlight and to show forth this change in doctrine, God uh, uh, appeared to Peter in a vision. It says in Acts 10 verse 9, On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord. E exactly what Lot said. Oh, not so, Lord, or not so, my Lord. And, and yet here, uh, here uh, let's keep reading. Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God has cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Thrice pointing to the number three, the purpose of God. And, and you see, God didn't, God didn't hearken to Peter, did he? Peter said the same thing. Not so, Lord. I've never eaten anything unclean. He's a Jew. And, and God gave commandments regarding the type of animals a Jew could eat and was not to eat. And Peter obeyed and followed those commandments and that's why he's um, protesting and and rejecting this vision and what the vision's telling him to do not so lord i've never eaten anything common or unclean but you see god's making a major change he's in, he's he's now going to include the gentiles as fellow heirs and the church age will will um, will be developed and and so forth and and so God does not accept Peter's rejection what I have cleansed call not thou common and we wonder why didn't God do the same thing with lot why didn't he do the same thing where where lot is saying uh, uh, again after hearing the command, and it's a command, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, pointing to the triune God, by the way, O oh, not so, my Lord, behold now, thy servant has found grace in thy sight, and so forth, and he lays it all out. And then again, God, it really is the one, he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also. I've accepted thee. Very difficult um, spiritual picture to understand. Historically, I think 
we, we have an easier time of it. Apparently, the mountain was further away. And, and that's why um, Lot is, is uh, uh, indicating or stressing this city is near to flee unto. This is closer. See, God uh, is commanding him, go to the mountain. And, and, and again, apparently, the mountain is some distance from the city Sodom, from outside the city where he's at. And remember, it was, it was a very urgent command. Haste thee, escape for thy life. Get out of the city as, um, you know, as much as God could emphasize the urgency of the matter. He, he was doing so. And Lot lingered for a time. And so now, historically, uh, I think it's probable that Lot is wanting to make up for the lost time and uh, realizing that uh, the city... Uh, is is just soon to be destroyed. Therefore, uh, let me go to the nearest place. Let me go to this little one, Zoar, because it's near to flee unto. Remember what he said about the mountain. In, at the end of verse 19, I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Now, the word take me is translated once or twice as overtake. Um, it, it has to do with following hard after. Um, and uh, it's actually the word cleave, um, interestingly, from Genesis 2, where uh, a, a husband will cleave unto his wife. Uh, so so uh, when you cleave, you're as close as you can possibly be. And I, and I think that it's just... Uh, stressing again that in Lot's mind that the evil, which would be the evil of the destruction, as Judgment Day is an evil day, the destruction of Sodom is an evil thing, the evil that will destroy Sodom will cleave to me. It, it will overtake me if I try to escape to the mountain because... It, 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 it's a, a little bit of a distance. And, and we don't have that kind of time. Rather, this city, Zoar, is near. So, historically, I think we were safe in that understanding as to why Lot was rejecting the uh, direction from the two men who, again, were God, uh, in, or a form of God uh, in the appearance of two men and was was um, rather putting forth this other idea about fleeing to Zoar. Now, you, you see, some people who um, they, they understand to some degree the end of the church age and yet they have taken things uh, a step further. They've really attempted to be holier than God uh, by, by saying that there's not to be fellowships, that fellowships are, are the same thing as a church. And, and some people have made reference to Genesis 19 and the fact that God commanded to go to the mountain just as he does in Matthew 24, and yet Lot determined to go to Zoar, and they have said, well, you see, uh, Zoar is a picture of fellowships, and, and, and fellowships are a problem. Fellowships should not be, and, and they're very down on fellowships for whatever reason. And, of course, God uh, has not... Um, set in motion any kind of uh, building up of fellowships and an e-Bible fellowship where, you know, that's the name of our ministry, which is an electronic ministry. E stands for electronic Bible fellowship. Some people get the mistake and think, well, we're a fellowship group. But no, the, the ministry of e-Bible fellowship is an electronic ministry in which we fellowship with God through His Word 
over the electronic medium. And, and it has nothing to do with a fellowship group, even though we had a, a fellowship that met regularly, weekly, for many years, and now uh, we, we meet in Day in the Words once a month. But, so, uh, but, but the fellowship of e-Bible has nothing to do with that. Again, it's, it's an electronic ministry. But they, they don't like e-Bible, because they don't like the idea of God shutting the door of heaven, and, and so they, they think we're, a fe they wrongly think that we're a fellowship group, and, and so it's really an attempt to, um, to say something bad that, that might uh, lead people away from e Bible fellowship uh, by saying that there should not be fellowship groups. But, but again, it, that's not in view here at all. At all. As a matter of fact, following that line of thinking, if Zoar were a type of fellowships, then it's as though God is accepting of them and approving of them, and fellowships would be a place of refuge, a place of deliverance from the wrath of God. Because notice that haste they, in verse 22, escape thither, that's referring to Zoar. For I cannot do anything till thou become thither, therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then Jehovah rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from Jehovah out of heaven. He also destroyed Adma Zeboam. He did not destroy the little city Zoar. And, and really, they don't realize what they're arguing for. And, and again, we're not saying this at all. Zoar does not represent fellowships. But if you follow their line of thinking, then it would be as though God had established fellowships as a place of salvation and refuge from the wrath of God. And no, he has not done that. He's not done that. And, and they're, they're just um, way off. They're, they're, they have an erroneous understanding. They're um, really their um, personal desire to, to uh, and, and desperate desire to maintain salvation and, and to try and attack a ministry like E-Bible Fellowship because we proclaim what, what God had His people proclaim to all the earth um, regarding May 21, 2011, that the door of heaven is shut. Well, they're, I don't know what they're doing by thinking that uh, saying Zoar is a fellowship and, and, and uh, their point is that after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot then leaves Zoar to go to the mountain. Well, yes, but he, he, uh, he, he, uh, uh, was was delivered from the wrath, from the fire and brimstone, by being in Zoar. So you can't have it both ways. And, and no, it has nothing to do with fellowship groups. Lord willing, when we get together in our next study, we're going to think more about this whole historical situation, this historical parable. Uh, we, we have some understanding of why... Lot insisted upon Zoar rather than going to the mountain. But we, of course, want to look at the spiritual. What could Zoar point to? Why is there this delay in fleeing to the mountain and, and so forth? And we'll try, again, it's very difficult language, but, but we'll try uh, by asking God for help. And, and praying for wisdom and hoping the Lord grants our request to understand these things when we get together in our next Bible study.